Okay, so let's have a quick chat about recording um, and actually recording in an environment that is pretty much a hybrid environment. Okay, so my recording environment is a hybrid. It's a hybrid of actual live recording and virtual instrument recording. So both are valid forms of recording. It's not just recording everything live, okay? When you're recording virtual instruments, even though they've already been sampled and oftentimes they've already been processed, still, you gotta actually go further than that and actually record them in your DAW and then go further and mix them. And the mixing process is part of the recording process. Oftentimes engineers, recording engineers, will make mixing decisions at the time of recording by using EQ, by using compression, and you know even effects like reverb. Oftentimes they will print an instrument with the effects. So, cause that's the sound they want to have. So that's important to remember when we're looking at this kind of a setup, okay? So let's have a look at this song. It's a very simple song. There's not much to it. We've got the vocal, of course. We've got drums that come in after the first chorus. We've got, uh, along with the bass, the bass guitar. We've got electric guitar. The electric guitar presents itself after the second chorus, okay? And then throughout. And we've got an acoustic guitar that comes in pretty much as a break, more or less, okay, uh, as a fourth, during the fourth chorus, where the drums and the bass go away, okay? So we talked about that in the arrangement video. And uh, we've got these tambourines and bells that go throughout, okay? So there, it's just this. So it's a sample of a Christmas bell, and I got the tambourines which are coming from um, Easy Drummer, okay? There it is. That's the tambourine, okay? And the other one is just a sample of a bell. And it just repeats itself, you know? I manipulated it a bit so it could have some variation. Now, for all of these tracks... For all of these tracks... Some of them have been recorded live, of course, the electric guitar, the bass, not the drums. Obviously, the drums are Easy Drummer, as always, okay? That's Easy Drummer right over here. There's my drummer, okay? There's my drummer right there, okay? So, uh, piano as well has been programmed. So, the drums and the piano, I don't play them. I dabble with the piano a little bit. I'm not good enough to play and record it, that's for sure. Okay, to play something like this. That's not gonna happen, okay? So it's recorded, but not really. In this instance, sometimes I actually do record it into like, so that it has a waveform view. But more often than not, I will just leave it like this, as MIDI, okay? And that's fine. So it's right here. It's right here, okay? I got all my patterns from here, okay? From my packs, my add-on packs, all in here, okay? I just drag and drop them onto here. That's where these blocks come from, okay? Each of these comes from the browser in Easy Drummer, okay? Which is pretty cool. You just drag it and drop it, okay? So... And that's the extent of the recording, but check this out, okay? This is the original. Let's go with this one. This is the sound that we have, right? In the mix. Wish you all the best times. May you but check it out in its original form, okay? Oh, sorry. Sorry, we don't want to turn that off. We'll turn these off, okay? Have a listen. That's what this sound, this piano sounds like. Okay? Out of the box. The upright piano in the standard uh, sound here. Okay? So, these effects 
This EQ. Another EQ. And this T-Rex processor. Okay? This is a multi-type of, it's a mastering processor type of thing, okay? It's got all kinds. It's got a compressor. It's got some EQ in there, okay? Some focus type thing. Uh, but some stereo uh, added in there as well. This is, okay, it not tec technically necessarily part of the recording process. Could be called part of the mixing process. But these two always overlap. Recording and mixing overlap. I, they are two separate things. There are recording engineers and there are uh, mixing engineers, but oftentimes, well, maybe not oftentimes, but often enough, these two people are one and the same. All right. So the one that's recording it is going to mix it. All right. Especially back in the day that used to happen all the time. Okay. So it was one person doing everything. But the point I'm trying to make here is that these decisions are recording decisions. They can also be mixing decisions, obviously compression, all of that stuff, especially when you're looking at, the, you know, like uh, this kind of thing here. Let me just find it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Where are we? Yeah, with the drums, okay? Now, if you listen to the drums... Okay? So the drums sound like. Now, there is a drums compressor here, okay? If you listen to this thing by itself, it's squashed. It's mixed in there lightly, okay? Without it, check it out without it, okay? Let's start that again. I'm going to mute it. Very subtle difference. Check it out again. Without it. And with it. Okay? Now, if we mute this and just focus on the drums, the original drum sound coming out of the box here, okay? That's what we have right now. Take out the EQ, and we'll take out this compressor. That's how it sounds out of the box, okay? In the mix, sorry, what are we missing? Uh... Sorry. Okay, here we go. That was so much need. It's lost. Drums are lost. Even if we raise the volume, and our hands they're too fat. It's too thick. Okay. See how they cut through? And they allow the bass to have a life of its own. Okay? Without it, and with the volume up, see what happens to the bass. It's not cutting through, is it? Now, these are mixing decisions, but like I said, mixing and recording overlap, in my opinion, okay? Because it's really important that when you're putting all this together, like for me, I don't, I don't like record the instruments and then, you know, mix everything. I don't do that. I don't start with raw tracks and then just put all the... No, I, I, I add things as I'm going, okay? So in this situation here, that's for the virtual instruments, so there's a bit of mixing going on when you're recording them, okay? You're not really recording them. They've already been recorded, right? But with real instruments, what we're looking at is we can start with the bass, okay? Angel. 
This is an actual bass guitar. Okay, I played I played this part. Okay, and as you can see, it's got its own effects on here. That's the original sound of the the uh, the bass guitar. Okay. So we're giving it more body. We're giving it some EQ here. We're giving it a little bit of a little bit of oomph. Okay, with the Shep 73. An amazing mixer, by the way, Andrew Sheps, okay. Added with the drums. Then we got the piano. Okay, we went through that. These guys as well. Okay. Let's unsolo everything, it'll be easier that way. So we got the electric guitar here as well, that's also recorded. As you can see here, just as a side note, and a very important one for recording, of course, uh, is all these takes. You may have noticed that within each track, there's like multiple lanes, what are called lanes in Reaper. This is one of the reasons I love Reaper because you record one track. Okay, so this is multiple tracks as you can see here, right? Okay, there's, I don't know how many, probably 10, whatever, doesn't matter. The point is that you record one, you record another. When you record the next take, it comes underneath it. And the next take comes underneath it. So now you have all these takes. So now when you're looking at the best possible comp okay a composite of of a multiple performances that's what a comp stands for it's a composite you're creating a composite performance out of many so the best you're trying to find the best this is the very common practice with vocals and as you can see over here with the vocals there's probably not as many tracks for whatever reason. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. Depends on the performance, depends on the song, but there's multiple takes over here. Look at this, look at all these lanes, okay? Look at all these lanes. So we got the master vocal, but we got also the doubled vocal. There's always doubling going on, but there is a composite track. So all of these, and the, the amazing thing about Reaper so you can do this with a lot of software, right? A lot of DAWs, you can do this. But with Reaper, I'll give you an example here with the bass. Okay, I got that performance, right? So I highlight this and with the T, I just press the T here. I go to the next track. Not good, next. Not, next. Look how fast this is, next. Week next. That's the one I want. Why? Because it mixes really well with my drums, right? It's perfect, okay? That is the amazing advantage of Reaper. Other software do this as well, but they do it in, in different tracks and it's not as easy to flip through all these comps. It's super time consuming. Okay, this could take hours, but with Reaper, it's just boom, 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 so quick. It's amazing, okay? And that's one of the reasons I love this bit of software. But that's pretty much it, guys. The recording process for this song is basically the live instruments were vocal, of course, bass guitar, electric guitar, there's some acoustic guitar in the end, and that's that. And then we have our virtual instruments, this is not recorded live, okay? This, these are samples. Um, and then the virtual instruments, we have the drums, tambourine over here, we got uh, piano, we've got uh, the drum kit over here, and of course we've got, as you can see here, an added snare, okay? So let's have a look at that in closing. Without that, let's add it. Just a snare. It's super subtle, but it's only during the choruses. You see this? It's only during the choruses. 
makes a difference. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a let's A B this one again. Okay, start it from the beginning. Without it. Okay, let's go without it. And I'll just add it. You'll just see me press the solo. Okay. It just cuts through the mix just that little bit it's almost imperceptible but in the context of a mix it just it's just that little added thing okay now this again is part of mixing but the recording you know for these recording videos i'm gonna add a lot of mixing tips as well okay so we're gonna look at you know like um like this type of thing i put this on the two bus Okay, right here, it's on instruments, it looks like. Yeah, I haven't put it on the vocals. You see, in this project, I've separated. So the vocals have their own compression and the instruments have their own, okay? So, if we have a listen to that. And a happy new year. So all the instruments, except the vocals, are going through this, okay? It's the CLA mix down. It's an amazing plugin, okay? It's got drive, which is distortion, basically. Glue, which is the compression. It's got treble, of course, the high end and the low end, okay? It's really amazing, and it's plug and play, man. I mean, I love Chris, Chris Lord Algae, uh, but it's just... And his plugins are amazing. I've got a lot of them. But it's like a plug and play thing. I've just boosted the, the, the treble a little bit here. But usually it's just all flat and it just adds this, like it just glues everything beautifully together really nicely. So that's the instruments. We'll have a listen at the vocals and the vocals are going through here. Wish you all through this one. Times. May your dreams be real. Have a man. So they're going separately, and then together, all of it is going through the master compressor, which is sort of like a multi-faceted mastering type of thing, which is T-Rex 1. I love it. It's really, really nice. And I've got the meter here. To monitor, monitor the meter before the mastering compressor and afterwards. As you can see, it's pretty much slammed. And it's coming in at minus 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. We don't want to clip. We don't want digital clipping. That's, that's for sure. Okay, so in the digital world, the last thing you want is clipping. In the analog world, clipping can sound pretty good can beef tracks up, it can make it sound raunchy, but not in the digital world. Here, we want to stay away from clipping at all costs, okay? So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that helps with the recording aspect of this song. I appreciate everything. I appreciate all your questions. we doing the Q&A. Um, I love that. And keep it coming and keep the feedback coming and helping you guys on the one-on-one -on -one as well in the Facebook group. And I just want to say here that I appreciate all of you and uh, thank you. So uh, I'll take care of yourselves.